and it's hard because when you've got people telling you you're ugly, you're fat, you're this, you're that, every single day on the internet, you start to like internalize it. Mm -hmm. afternoon and welcome back to the vlog i have not vlogged in so so long <laughs> oh my best friend carla is in the back hey get it get it we are prepping and getting ready for one extra live i'm on a panel with hydration ma is the way forward ma'am sorry about that um, I'm on a panel with Richie Brave and Kalechi. So we're doing that at Camden Roundhouse today. So I thought I would vlog our little getting ready process and just the day, like I haven't really been in like the best, like blogging mind frame and there's been a lot going on. And I am gonna get into a little bit about kind of where I've been, why I've not been vlogging, what's been going on a little bit later. And we're going to Haksan, right? For yeah. food after one extra. And then I'm just gonna, take you with me kind of for the weekend and maybe just a little bit into the week so you can see what like a week is like i guess so um you know like i've just not been feeling mm -hmm. like putting myself out there and it's hard because when you've got people telling you you're ugly you're fat you're this you're that every single day on the internet you start to like internalize it mm -hmm. but obviously like i'm not stupid like i know i've gained weight i know i'm not my size that i want to be i know i feel like I have some insecurities and stuff, mm -hmm. but I've never let people bother me before. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like all my friends always, like, always knew I never let that bother me previously. So I just have to get myself back out there and just, yeah, like not give people who- Don't mean anything to you. Right, like get to me, that's okay. the plan. This has been the worst start to any year I have ever had. Mate. Literally. Like, you know normally, like, when it's, like, New Year, New Me, and it's, like, a, like something great happens. I yeah. feel like this year, particularly, like, each month is just, like, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Get like, bang, get like, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, no, 100%. This is my look for today. <gasps> I'm so out of breath. Um, And I don't know why, because I haven't been doing anything, but... I really, really love it. Carla went for like dark eyes, like really, really glowy skin. So I'm ready to go. This has been like my first like public thing this year. So I'm like a bit nervous, but I really do like the look. Um, I've just got on like a black jumpsuit. I'm gonna put some trainers on, keep it super cute and then put heels on for Hakusa. And we're on our way to Camden Roundhouse now to film for the BBC. One extra it is, um, it's like a, uh, one extra live talks. It's the first one ever. It's being hosted by Richie Brave. It's myself, Kalechi, um, I believe MP Dawn Butler, um, and Terrell Scott. And we're essentially talking about freedom of speech, cancel culture, and like what that means. I don't think Richie could have picked a better topic. Essentially, I make my living talking and talking about events and topics and people and freedom of speech is so important. So it's gonna be really, really interesting to see what everyone on the panel has to say. Um, a lot of the time people think that freedom of speech means freedom of consequence and that's just not the case. You can say essentially whatever you want, right? But that does come with consequences. And so people often bring up cancel culture when talking about freedom of speech. So yeah, it's gonna be really, really interesting. I'm excited to see what everybody has to say. Um, we're here, obviously, Camden Roundhouse, and I'm just like, I'm really excited to talk. Like, talking is what I do. I love talking, and I know that, like, not everybody really gets it. Some people think, oh, all this girl does is just talk crap or talk rubbish. But for me, I can't ever really remember 
wanting to do anything else and I feel like these days people don't talk about their dreams and what they want and I know for like me and I don't know if anyone else can relate to this I've gained a lot of weight um <clears throat> even having this conversation makes me nervous but I've gained a lot of weight and I've let that stop me from achieving my goals and doing the things that I want to do because I'm scared of like what people will say I'm scared of facing myself so I've got my birthday coming up this month is a bit tricky but as soon as my birthday is done I'm going to get back on my weight loss journey and really just go for it so much has been happening and I've been away from vlogging I've been away from Instagram and YouTube and doing all of the things that I love to do because of things that have been going on like in my personal life and you know when you're with someone or you're in a relationship with someone that isn't good for you or can, it can sometimes be toxic for whatever reason not to play the blame game it can kind of like distract you from your purpose so, yeah. so I thought it was going to be a bit dark we are literally just um, in the bar um, I'm with V I'm with Kalechi and um, we just came to get some drinks before the show starts we i don't know we were gonna watch but now we want to drink so you know how the vibe goes so we are basically sitting waiting for the show to start to so start starts but look who i'm now with <laughs> literally we've been sat in here for like no longer than five minutes and she's already had like five people come up to her and say oh i love you Kalechi. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so yeah, we are just gonna have some drinks and then we're gonna start the show. So welcome back. We're at Asia Talks Live Part 2. Woo! We love the live audiences. So originally when we started, I'm not gonna take too long, but if you ain't come into the safety chat, we explored freedom of speech within the confines of professionalism, so being in a profession. Now we're moving on to complete freedom of speech. I'm regulated, you can just plug up the things and say what you want to say. <laughs> so I want to welcome my first guest to the stage, the famous moderator, Ashley Louise. <laughs> and my next guest, Kalechi Okafor. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to welcome you both to the show. Um, and the reason why I wanted you both on this panel is because A, you're two black women that have created platforms for yourself. You have carved their lane for yourself. Um, in a space that isn't always easy, and you're unregulated, unfiltered, <laughs> and you really say what you need to say when people agree with you a lot. Yeah. And I love that. And actually, is it the same for you? So in terms of like subject matters, the, the, the rooms that you host, yeah. are there just no go areas for you that you're asked? Yeah, that's why I kind of was laughing, because I feel like there aren't that many. <laughs> 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 I love these self awareness. You know? yeah, yeah, so I feel like, leading on from what Kalechi was saying, if, because sometimes people who are really well versed in a subject may not have the platform and they might want to bring awareness to a topic and they might want me to host it and then they can kind of facilitate the information that's being shared so I can kind of do it that way so that I'm not talking about things that I don't know. I've got someone on stage that does know. Um, but otherwise, no, we talk the same. We really do just say what we do. The only time I won't talk about something is if I feel like it's going to harm my talk to that community. So if I feel like the people who come and support me in room after room, space after space, if they are going to be affected by what's being discussed, then I won't talk about it. Have you ever had a room and afterwards you thought to yourself, maybe I, I should not touch that? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I feel like even if it goes wrong, there's always like a lesson in it. And I feel like where I am now with my moderating and my spaces and to get it so polished, I had to have those rooms that went bad to get to where I am now. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? So no, like if it goes bad, we move. I feel like they cancel me every three to five business days. <laughs> 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 we move. <laughs> 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 I'm sick <of> him. <laughs> She knows. <laughs> I've been DMing her like, since they cancelled me again. <laughs> I'm out of 
find that, I find that so interesting because when we talk about that, I'm going to be on speech. And these aren't your rooms, actually, but other rooms I've been in. So there was a room once about prison, or there was a room once about COVID jabs. And I remember everyone was coming in with no knowledge. Right, was, I remember. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, someone in that room laughed at my dad nearly died of COVID. Wow. It was quite right. disgusting. But I came in and I was a bit like, well, this freedom of speech is great. You can all chat. Where are the medical professionals? Right. Where we get action with and black communities, we all know that we're a little bit suspicious of things like, you know, medicine, etc. You have the right to be as well. Yeah, so when we're having these conversations about freedom of speech, it's really important that there is some sort of. What's the word I'm looking for? Rigor. But it needs to be rigor in the conversations that we're having, and there needs to be some sort of accountability for the ways in which those conversations can go. So I guess. Um, I'll come to you first, um, Ash. Why do you think you are Ash? Yeah, Ash. Talk to me about Ash. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be my name. I don't know if I'm going to be my name. Why do you think platforms like yours are so important? I think because for a long time, people like me didn't really have anywhere to go and speak. Mm. And I feel like that's why people like talk to Ash because they can get their shit off essentially. If something's gone wrong or they see something in the press that's annoyed them, they've got somewhere that they can go and let out that frustration. And we're all kind of, we might not always agree, but we all kind of care about each other in that community. And there's a safe space. No, it's not a safe space, no. but it's a safe space. <laughs> 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 it's not safe It's not safe
you know, come what may. And I think that that's a safe place to be. I think that part of the problem with the internet and just generally um, as a result of uh, like white supremacy is that a lot of people are speaking about things that they know nothing about, but they think by virtue of um, race um, intersecting with gender or whatever and the benefits that it gives them in society that they'll just open the mouth and whatever comes out is what, or they'll just set up their fingers that have not washed lead. <laughs> <laughs> it's not correct. A sponge. Good morning, everybody. Oh, last night was so amazing and just, I'm so tired. I look crazy this morning. Um, my, obviously, my skin right now is not the best and I've got this stupid line from where my, my hair tie was before bed to keep the ponytail, ponytailing honey. But honestly, guys, last night to me was a bit of a reboot and just in me getting back into the swing of vlogging and me getting back into just getting myself back out there being on camera being around people being public speaking my mind all of that last night felt so i don't know like it just felt so much easier than i can i think i had anticipated and even in just getting back into vlogging, I completely forgot to vlog dinner last night. Um, and we had the best, best time. We were both so tired. But where I hadn't seen her in a little while, um, she obviously lives in Bristol, I live in London. And we both kind of had busy, busy lives and busy schedules. But we're still those friends that like, that is one of my best, best, best friends on the planet. And I love and trust her with everything. Um, and we speak all the time, but sometimes seeing each other is not as easy. But when we do see each other, even if we're tired, exhausted, um, you know, like don't really want to speak that much, it's just nice to be in each other's company. And I think for me, it's really important to have those sorts of friends. I just, last night it was just so funny, both of us in Pakistan, like, but you know, I got to see her, got to spend time with her and then we came home. Um, so yeah, no, it was a really, really nice night and I had a really good time. Um, and you know, just like, so funny story and you'll hear this on the One Extra Live recording if you guys watch it. Um, I connected with Kalechi on Clubhouse and she had me blocked. <laughs> she had me blocked on Twitter and I didn't really know why, but knowing how I was on Twitter a few years ago. I know I, I know my ass did something, okay? I know I did something. Um, I don't know what, I can't remember what, but it would have been block worthy probably. So we were just speaking about how now, um, she's probably one of the few black women in the industry that I feel like I can message when things are getting a bit crazy. And, you know, it's just nice to have a really supportive um, woman who is extremely successful and, amazing at what she does and someone who I kind of look up to in that space and I think in the UK we don't like admitting that people are celebrities Kalechi is a celebrity right like ZZ Mills is a celebrity Audrey from the Receipts podcast is a celebrity Tolly celebrity um all of these women in this space you know um Denise Dainty celebrity all of these women in these spaces they are celebrities they do um, a lot of amazing things for the culture, for entertainment. And if they, we pick those same women up and put them in America, nobody would have any issues with call, calling them celebrities, right? It's, and um, Andy, uh, the back chat director, um, Trend Central owner, he also makes this point that like, we don't like being fans. And I'm such a fan of all the women I just named, but especially Kalechi, I'm, I'm in awe of what she's built for herself. And um, yeah, getting to share like a stage and speak with her last night was was amazing to be honest. So yeah, um, I am starving. I need to tidy up my flat. It is not as tidy as it needs to be, honey. Okay, we need to get the hoover out. We need to do some mopping. But um, I just wanted to show you guys, I had a delivery yesterday of um, my talk to Ashma. It came in this big, well, it's not big, but it's samples for my merch. Um, so I just want to see what it looks like. I wasn't happy with the first set of samples. I just feel like my talks with Ash fam, they expect a lot from me and they deserve a lot because they're very supportive and they come to the shows, they come to the rooms, they come to the spaces. And so if they're going to buy merch, they want proper, proper merch. So um, yeah, so we're just going to have a look to see 
um, if I'm happy with this or not. Um, let's have a little look. Ah, oh, I love it. So basically what we did is we did the, the Talks of Ash hoodies on um, silk screen. Oh my God, no, I am so, so happy. Um, guys, I'm actually, I'm gassed. I'm gassed because, right, let me just explain a little bit about this process because I basically, so me and um, a really good friend of mine, Manny, we designed together the Talks with Ash Much. I basically sent him exactly what I wanted to look like and I explained that I wanted it to look like, graphic -y. Like I wanted like images, but I didn't want them to look like photos. I wanted them to look like graphics, like cartoons. And so we spent some time going back and forth, back and forth. And the designs that we sent over, I didn't realize were so rich in color and so intricate that they kind of needed to be printed at a higher, so the designers in here and the people that do this for a living are probably screaming at the TV saying I'm saying it all wrong. But there's two different ways, well there's lots of different ways to print on to clothing and one of those ways is um, DTG, I think that's what it's called. And it essentially is um, like digitally printing the image onto the garment. And then there's another process called silk screening. Now for these tea, for these hoodies, the like basic ones that just kind of say, what was the outcome? So we've got the Talks with Ash logo. I'm not sure if you can see here at the front. And then at the back, we've got the, what was the outcome? And it's orange. And if you are here often, you know what was the outcome was something that I say a lot on spaces. So I really wanted these to look good and pop. And the problem was they weren't they weren't popping with the DTG. Um, and they said to me, in order for me to get the brightness that I wanted, I had to silk screen. And sometimes why people don't silk screen is because if you've got lots of different colors in your design, you need a silk screen for each color, essentially. So the ink, I don't think I'm explaining this properly, but essentially you need like, you need to set up a silk screen for each color that's in your, um, your garment and that you have to pay per screen. And so some of these screens can start from like 25 pound each, but they can go up to like 90 pounds each. So if you've got like 10, 11, 12 colors, your startup costs are gonna be a little bit more. Um, but honestly, I'm so happy with the brightness. Like it really, I'm not sure if it's, if it's doing it justice on camera, but it's really popping in the feel of it. It feels like paint. And that's essentially what we wanted. So I am so happy with these, honestly, guys. I am buzzing. I am buzzing so what we need to do now is um i'm gonna go back to them and just say like i'm really really happy and we just need um talks with ash um talks with ash labels printed in the inner inner parts of the hoodie so at the moment it just says large but we need that to say talks with ash so <gasps> Oh, I am very, very happy. So that's the, the logo hoodies. And I think they've sent me two. Um, they've sent me one on a large. No, I, what, no, I think they've sent me two different hoodies. Um, what size is this one? This is a unisex. No, this is another large. I think he's put them on two larges, but no, this is phenomenal. I'm really, really happy with this. And so now what we'll do is if I show you, I can't, I don't know where the other hoodie is to show you the difference, but um, what I'll start doing is sending these out. Amazing. And then um, this is kind of the one I was waiting for. This is, um, this has just been printed onto like a better quality t-shirt. Right, so this is from the Girl Gang collection. I am so, 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 so happy with how this has all turned out. Honestly, I am ecstatic. Um, no, they did really, really well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna order a few of these and yeah, get it out. I don't know what they did differently on this one. I think they just printed at a higher, uh, higher quality, but no, this is exactly what I want. So yeah, we're ready to go with that. And um, so what I'm gonna do now is that I've approved those samples is get them to make the labels. And then we're just gonna order a small batch. Um, 
so that we can do like photo shoots and things like that. So I am so happy, honestly.